that's honestly what I love astrology for. I think it really is a lens through which we can affirm our own strengths and gifts and paths, really finding this unconditional love for ourselves and knowing that we are who we are for a reason, that it's all divinely structured and architected. We can also have this unconditional love for others, understanding that the cosmos designed them to be exactly who they are as well. Hello, my friends. Welcome to It's All Magic. I am your guide, your host, and your friend, Devin Hine. And here, we'll be discussing how to make your life truly feel like magic. I believe that our very existence on Earth is nothing less than a miracle, and that we all have so much potential to learn, to grow, to experience, and to create during our short time here. It is both my passion and my pleasure to walk this path of life optimization by your side, where we'll discuss topics like passion, purpose, intuition, manifestation, physical well-being, and much, much more. I'm a yoga teacher, a meditation and breathwork facilitator, and a national board certified health and wellness coach. But more importantly, I am an eternal optimist, a lover of life, and a forever student. It is my hope that with each and every episode, you too, will finally start to believe it really is all magic after all. Ready to dive in? Let's do it. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another magical episode of It's All Magic. I have literally been squealing over here. My palms are sweating. I'm so excited about this episode. And as always, I know I say that all the time, but I am serious. This topic is one of my favorite topics to discuss, to study, to read about, to learn about. And the fact that I get to share it with you all today is literally making me giddy. This information is so transformational, affirmational, and healing in every way. Uh, There's so much to get into and I cannot wait. I know you are going to love this one. But (laughs) before we get into the conversation, I want to, of course, give us a few moments to take some grounding breaths. I'm choosing some grounding breaths today for a few reasons. First of all, if you can't tell, I really need it. I am bouncing off the walls. I am like a little child over here entering into a candy shop or more specifically for me it would have been a bookstore but I desperately need to be grounded I'm sure I'm not alone in that and second of all when I am recording this this is actually on a Virgo full moon and Virgo is one of the three earth signs in astrology and so in order in order to honor the element of earth I think we should ground a little bit <laughs> So the breathing that we're going to do today is one of my favorites. If you are a religious listener of It's All Magic, you will know this by now, but it is called bees breath or humming breath. This is just a really quick technique to calm your nervous system, bring you back to center and make you feel a whole lot more stable and grounded. The way it works is that we will inhale through our nose and then we're going to seal our lips closed and as we exhale out of the nose, we're actually going to hum. So you're kind of, you're using your nostrils for the actual air itself, but you're also using your your throat and your vocal cords, which are connected to your vagus nerve and whenever we trigger the vagus nerve it serves as almost a break on the sympathetic nervous system and remember the sympathetic nervous system is that fight or flight stress response so by triggering the vagus nerve which puts the brakes on that fight or flight system it automatically reroutes us into the relaxation system otherwise known as the parasympathetic nervous system So all of that to say, we're going to do five breaths today. Remember, you're inhaling through the nose, sealing the lips at the top, and then you're going to hum out your full exhale. Try to elongate that exhale to just further calm your body and ground your system. So if you would like to close your eyes at this point, you're more than welcome to. 
And if you'd like to place your hands, maybe one on your heart, one on your belly, or both on your legs, palms down if you would like to ground with me, and palms up if you would like to receive a little bit more energy today. Let's first just take a cleansing breath together. So emptying out from your previous breath, go ahead and inhale through the nose, filling up all the way. For this one, open mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Let the five breaths begin. Inhale through the nose. Seal your lips and hum it out. Mm-hmm. And again, inhale through the nose. And hum it out. Mm -hmm. inhale through the nose and seal your lips to hum Mm -hmm. second to last round inhale through the nose filling up all the way and hum Final breath, deepest one yet. Inhale fully and longest hum. Beautiful breathing in through the nose. And out through the nose. Hmm. Gorgeous. You can flutter open your eyelids if you got the chance to close them. Ah, I hope you're feeling a little bit more grounded. I definitely am. I'm still feeling a little bit sweaty and giddy and so, so excited, but just the perfect amount to bring you on this journey with me. So the topic that we will be discussing today that you will probably have already gleaned from the episode title itself are the four elements. The reason why we're discussing the four elements today is because I am in the midst of a very in-depth astrology course. I've wanted to become an astrologer for quite some time and I finally decided to metaphorically pull the trigger and At the very beginning of the course, we started by looking at astrology, more than astrology, the entire universe and all of humanity through the lens of the four elements. The four elements have been honored in so many different religions, cultures, societies, spiritualities. It has been used in hula dancing in Hawaii, honoring the four directions, the four elements. It's a big part of Kabbalah and Judaism. It was a massive part of spirituality in ancient Egypt. Also amongst the ancient Greeks, they had this deep honor and reverence for the four elements. And so we can see around the world and across different belief systems, there is this great respect for the four elements that make up our world. And what makes these elements so fascinating is that in our conversation today, we will start very... Uh, kind of high level talking about how these elements make up the universe. But as we get into more of the psychological makeup of these elements and how we all have these elements within us, but in varying amounts and how that actually helps to create our personalities. It helps to craft our gifts, our strengths, our weaknesses, our challenges. And it's simply this beautiful lens through which you can look at the world. I have been studying the elements via astrology for a while now, but doing this extra deep dive recently, I have been telling everyone that I can about them. I have been analyzing people's behaviors around me, trying to label them and archetype them with the elements, and it's simply been a blast. So before we get into more about the elements themselves, I want to give you the opportunity to actually follow along with this elemental survey if you would like to figure out 
how you have these elements within you, which ones you have more of and which ones may be missing. And the reason why we want to do this survey, I've done it many times at this point and I have facilitated the survey for others, is that we want to honor the elements that you naturally have in high amounts but we also want to try to balance you out. I say you, but I'm also working on myself here because if you can think of the four elements as the four wheels on a car, the four tires, if one of them is flat or you have one that is far larger than the others, the car is going to be off balance. It won't drive as well as it possibly could. And the same is true of us. We absolutely want to honor the elements that we have more strongly because it usually does point us towards our gifts, our strengths, our purpose, our path. But we also want to make sure that we're tending to those weaker elements, those missing elements, so that we can make sure that we are balanced human beings and that we're constantly seeking further growth and improvement and development. That's honestly what I love astrology for. I think it really is a lens through which we can A, affirm our own strengths and gifts and paths, really finding this unconditional love for ourselves and knowing that we are who we are for a reason, that it's all divinely structured and architected. We can also have this unconditional love for others, understanding that the cosmos designed them to be exactly who they are as well. So there is this aspect of unconditional love. So that's kind of the first part. But the second is that it does help us to further understand the challenges we might have in life, the struggles, the areas in which we can really grow in this lifetime. So with that as kind of the introduction, I want to offer this survey to you all. And even if you are listening to this on a walk right now, I want you to pull up notes on your phone and I want you to answer these questions. They're really simple questions. You're just going to give yourself kind of a point system. So I will have 10 different, 10 different questions per segment and there will be four segments total. So for each of the 10 questions, per segment or 40 questions total, I want you to mark yourself as a 1.1 if you resonate with that statement at least 50% of the time where it really describes your personality. I want you to give yourself a 0.5 if it's one of those uh, kind of-ish and then zero or just leave it blank if it does not describe you at all. Okay, so again, there will be 40 questions total, four segments, 10 questions per segment. I am not going to tell you what the segments symbolize. I'm just going to call it section one, section two, section three, and section four. So even in your notes, if you're doing this alongside me, I want you to label each section with the number of the section. So one, two, three, or four, and I will tell you the 10 statements per section. I'll tell you when we're moving on. And then at the end of this, I want you to just pause the podcast or the YouTube video. I want you to tally up your points per section. And then I want you to, uh, what is that? I want you to rank the highest element to the lowest element. And again, you'll be ranking it in terms of the section number because I'm not going to tell you the element until the very end. So I know that was a lot. And if this is not the right time for you to do the survey, you can always listen to the episode and come back to it. But I'm telling you, it's really fascinating and it'll make this episode so much more informational and important to you if you actually know your own elemental breakdown. So this survey was created by my astrology teacher, Deborah Silverman, who I'm sure many of you have seen on social media. I might venture to say she is the most well-known, well-respected astrologer of our time. She is also a clinical psychologist and she has been doing this work for over four decades. So she has this really gorgeous way of blending astrology and psychology in a way that we can 
use it again to harness our strengths and work on our weaknesses. Okay, so here is the survey. Again, you can get out your notes. If you have an iPhone, you can get out a notepad, whatever works for you. So here is section number one. Again, there will be 10 questions. If you resonate with the statement, give yourself a one. If you resonate like eh, kind of a little bit, give yourself a 0.5. And if you do not resonate, leave it blank or just give yourself a zero. So here is section number one. Question one. I cry easily. I cry easily. Number two, I am sentimental and like to save sentimental objects. So I am sentimental and like to save sentimental objects. Three, I become nonverbal when upset. I become nonverbal when upset. Four, My body gets immediate gut reactions to people. My body gets immediate gut reactions to people. Five, I second guess myself. I second guess myself. Six, my self-talk tends to be negative. Seven, I am a private person and I cherish private time. Eight, I can be hypersensitive emotionally or physically. Nine, I am fascinated by the supernatural and or the mystical. Ten, music is a necessity in my life. Okay, and I'll actually give you a second now to tally those up if you'd like to do so. So that's the end of section one. Make sure you've tallied those and then you can move on to section two. So here is section two. Question number one. I find words easily and others consider me quite talkative. Twelve, I enjoy watching people and asking questions. Three, I fill in or finish people's sentences. Fourteen, or four, sorry, I observe and analyze people. Five, I easily get bored with people and want to move on. Six, it is easy for me to remember numbers and details. Seven, I am easily distracted by external stimuli. Eight, I change plans and directions easily. Nine, I frequently forget where I put things. Ten, harmony is essential even if the cost is high. And then when you finish answering that one, you can go ahead and tally up your points for section number two. And then section number three, question one, saving money is important to me. Two, others consider me to be practical and grounded. Three, I clean when I am upset. Four, I am thorough and deliberate when I work. Five, I love to eat and am sensitive to tastes and smells. Six, I prefer to be in control. Seven, 
Seven, being in nature is essential for me. Eight, I am goal-oriented and I get results. Nine, people can rely on me and consider me dependable. And 10, I am slow to change. So that's the end of section three. Go ahead and tally up your points there. And now moving on to the fourth and final section. One, I thrive on exercise, athletics, and expending physical energy. Two, I am outspoken and frequently say things that get me in trouble. Three, I have lots of energy and am enthusiastic and passionate. Four, people would like to turn down my volume or they think I'm too intense. Five, it is easy for me to laugh and find the humor in life. Six, I am deeply into philosophy and or spirituality. Seven, I inspire others to take action. Eight, people get mad at me. Anger could be an issue, either my own or others. Nine, I can be the life of the party. And 10, I fight for the underdog and or love to argue and debate. So then you can go ahead and tally up your points for section number four. And once you have tallied your points, I want you to rank those section numbers in terms of your highest number to your lowest number. So for example, you might have three, one, two, four. So highest points to lowest points. Amazing. So once you have your survey results, you will better understand how this whole episode is laid out and what it all means. So I will just go ahead and tell you now what each section represented, and then you will better understand everything I say going forward. So section number one is the element of water. Section number two is the element of air. Section number three is the element of earth. And section number four is the element of fire. So now if you'd like, you can even make note of what you have the most of, what you have the least of. So the four elements, I have already alluded to the fact that they make up the universe. They make up everything around us. They make up our physical bodies. And they are so, so profound when you actually take a second to study them. So I want to give you a couple examples of how they make up the world around us, including ourselves. So when it comes to astrology, all of the 12 zodiac signs are actually reflective of one of the elements. So there are four elements and 12 signs, meaning there are three signs per element. So for water, we have Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. For air, we have Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. For earth, we have Capricorn, Virgo, and Taurus. And for fire, we have Leo, Aries, and Sagittarius. So you might already know your sun sign. The sun sign is the sign that if you're at a dinner party, someone says, hey, what's your sign? It's kind of the one we all grow up knowing. You might know your sun, moon, and rising signs, or you might have your whole chart memorized. So keep in mind, you have a lot more planets than just one or even those big three. 
So it helps to look at your chart to see kind of that elemental breakdown. But what's interesting is that your chart doesn't always reflect the elements in your life currently. For example, you might be really low on water in your chart. You might only have one planet that's in a water zodiac sign, or you might have no planets in a water zodiac sign. But it might be something that you have already potentially worked on, let's say in past lives, or simply put, you came into this life having already kind of mastered the element of water one way or another. And so you might not have that in your chart because for better or worse, let's almost say God or the universe said, okay, this girl is good on water. I am not going to put more in her recipe. So if you can think of the the planets or birth charts or astrological natal charts being like the ingredients to our soul blueprint. Maybe whoever was putting in the ingredients decided, oh, they could use a little bit more of this element. Oh, they're already good on this element. Let's hold that one back. So I say all of this to mention that you might have a lot of earth in your birth chart, but you might not actually have a lot of that earth element in your life right now, which is why that survey is so important. Because we can sometimes also be born with a lot of that element present within us, and then we actually squander it throughout our lives. Or we're at a certain season in life where we've extinguished our own fire, or we don't have that air that we once did. So once I break down the elements, you will be able to tell for yourself which ones that you naturally feel like you were born with, you gravitate towards, and maybe which ones you feel that you once had that you have let go of or surrendered for better or for worse. So when it comes to these elements, so water, air, earth, and fire, we can even see the way in which they make up our physical bodies. They make up who we are. So in one word, I will explain each element. So if you can only remember these four words that I say, that's a fantastic takeaway. I am later going to dive in more in depth to each element, but I want you to remember each single word per element. So for water, that symbolizes feelings, emotions intuition. So it's the feeling body. That's water. Air is the intellect, the mind. Earth is practicality and the physical body. And then fire is the life spirit, that spark of energy. So you can see that it's quite literal in a certain sense. And every single day, we rely on the four elements for life when you wake up in the morning, you need to drink some water, you need to go to the bathroom. So we rely on water, water to drink, to stay hydrated. And then earth is the food that we eat. The food that we eat literally is bread in the earth. Then we have air, which is our intellect. It's thinking, it's the mind, it's learning, it's talking. And then we have fire, which again, is that life force energy. It's our spirit. So we need all four to stay alive. And to take that one step further, I like to think of these even in terms of when we need some change in our lives. The process of change requires all four elements. So for example, when you look around at your life and you start to feel lethargic or sad, depressed, anxious, you feel like something's missing. So any sort of emotion, any sort of intuitive gut feeling that there's more out there for you, that first instinct is water. Then from water, we move on to air. Suddenly you have a, an idea and you're daydreaming, you're brainstorming, and you're thinking it through. And then you initiate, you power through, you get it started. That's fire. And then you got to stay on the path. Slow and steady wins the race. That persistence, that maintenance is earth. So we 
are embodied by all four elements, but we also use all four elements in our day-to-day life for survival, but also for thrival, you could say, in terms of when we need a change in our lives. We need to go through that process of water, feeling like something's wrong, air, I have an idea, fire, I'm starting it, and earth, I'm continuing with it. So I want to break down these four elements a little bit more. And for each element, I'm going to tell you more about what they symbolize, what people with that element are often like. I'm going to tell you what the low road version of that is when it is way too imbalanced. Maybe it's too heavy in that chart. What the high road is, where people that have a lot of that element can can almost transmute it, alchemize it into something magical. And then I'm going to give you homework if you were low in that element. So when taking that survey, if that was your lowest element or one of your lowest elements, because we tend to be really strong in one or two and then missing one to two as well. I want you to figure out which of the homework ideas I give you that resonate most with you, that feel like, oh, that could be a healthy challenge, and then run with it. So let's start with water. So I said that water symbolizes emotions, feelings, intuition. So you can think of water as this still wisdom. It's when everything is still and silent and there's that intuitive knowing There's those emotions that arise. So people with a lot of water tend to be great meditators. They tend to be great at sitting in stillness and really noticing the emotions that are popping up. So even when they do breath work, maybe at the beginning of this episode, they usually can tune into their body and feel the emotions. So you can think of water people as often being homebodies. They're really sensitive to too much stimuli in the world. They tend to be a little bit more introverted. Sometimes they prefer the company of animals to humans or trees to humans. They tend to... um, be very mushy and soft and sensitive and loving. They are like the cuddle bug embodied. So the water person would probably want their date night to be actually just being home alone, painting and cooking and then cuddling. (laughs) So that is water. You can start to understand that water is really just that wise, feeling, sensitive intuitive, homebody, painting, stillness, meditating, it all kind of goes in the realm of water. And also note, as I'm talking about these elements now, yes, I'm talking about the elements, but I'm mainly talking about people that have that element really high in their embodiment or really high in their chart. So the low road of water actually tends to be too much sensitivity to the point of depression, isolation, and addiction. So water people can definitely venture into that path of self-isolating, never coming out into the real world, and just being pulled down by their emotions where they can't come up for air, literally. The high road of the water person is great wisdom. Being the meditator, being the observer, they tend not to be as talkative. They're often a little shy and introverted. So being comfortable with being the one that's standing off to the side, just observing everyone and taking it all in and also learning how to have kind of those emotional boundaries so that as an empath, especially you're not absorbing everyone else's emotions and energy. So that's low road and high road of water. If you were sitting here and water was your lowest, I have a couple ideas for homework for you. The first is learn to meditate and sit in silence. So that might sound terrifying, which I completely understand. And on one of my astrology live classes the other day, my mentor was giving someone water homework. And she said, if learning to meditate sounds really overwhelming, I have a couple other ideas for you. One is that I want you to sit on the couch in your living room with a cup of tea or coffee and I want you to turn on an entire symphony, so classical music, and listen to the whole thing just sitting there with your tea. (laughs) 
<laughs> and some of us were like, oh my gosh, that sounds like it's a lot. That takes a lot of patience, a lot of stillness, a lot of going inwards and just sitting with whatever's bubbling up to the surface, literally in terms of emotions. So that was one idea. Another was watching a sad movie and really letting yourself feel So many people feel blocked from being able to cry or express their emotions, not only to others, but even to themselves. So giving yourself permission to watch a sad movie and actually bawl your eyes out could be quite healing for your water element. Another practice that she said, which is a toughie, she said that sometimes she'll do this exercise with her dog where she will look at her dog and imagine that he died. Imagine that he is no longer here and she starts to feel really sad, kind of this bubbling up of emotion and grief and love for her dog. And she lets herself sit in that for a little bit until she feels like she just wants to cuddle her dog, kiss her dog, and then go hang out with her kids and love up on them. And she said that when she lets herself express her water element in those ways by watching sad movies, listening to a sad song, sitting in stillness with your tea while listening to the symphony, then she feels so much more unconditional love for everyone around her, including herself. Water really helps us stay in touch with the magic of life. I mean, if there were no emotions, can you imagine not feeling sadness, not feeling excitement, not feeling joy, not feeling anxiety? If it was all just monotone and neutral, there is no magic. So really let yourself feel that water element, the emotions, the intuition. Then moving on to air. So if water was the emotional body, Air is the intellectual mind. So air people, which I can speak to because I have a lot of air, (laughs) tend to be very talkative, insatiably curious. They want to read every book. They want to take every class. They want to learn and become everything. They have this insatiable mind where they want to learn a little about a lot of things. They also, because they're so talkative, friendly, conversational, they love striking up conversations with strangers. They could talk about anything. Air people are the people that you could put up on stage for like a a mini TED talk, say, okay, you have five minutes to talk about this theme. Here's your random theme, the beach. And they could talk for five minutes about the beach. (laughs) They can talk about anything and everything. They love to write. They love to communicate. They love social media. They love to text. They love to email. They talk really fast. They might talk with their hands. (laughs) So it's a lot of that mental energy. But what's interesting about air is that while we can utilize the mind for anything we want to do in life, we need the mind, we need the intellect, it can also run off on its own. So too much air can lead to anxiety. It can also disconnect us from our emotions. When we are in the mind too much, we don't always feel what's in our heart or in our gut. And so the water and the air elements can kind of play off one another. So for that water person that gets too bogged down by their emotions, they've lost track. They've lost touch with objectivity and rationalizing things. They've lost their mind in a way. They're too deep into the emotional body. But for air people, they can be so intellectual, so mental, so thinking and talking and and brainstorming and, and taking in more information that they lose track of the emotions. So air people can be very indecisive. It's like, so which do you want to study? I, I don't know. I want to study them all. Yeah, but what's your body telling you? I, I I don't know. I'm not in my body. I'm in my head. So you can see how that can play out for any of these elements. We can have too little or too much. So the low road of air, they can be a little scattered, a little confused, disorganized. They lose track of where they put things, quite literally airheaded. And it doesn't mean stupid. It means they're probably distracted while they're doing something. They can also be very gossipy because they are so into conversation and learning about everyone's information and sharing information and networking and all of that. And they can also be very indecisive. 
But the high road of air is the poet and the teacher, the writer, the one that is the wordsmith. They can connect with that emotional body of water, but then beautifully and eloquently translate it into words that the rest of the world can understand. So water often really sits inwards inside our body, but air is where we can translate it out of ourselves. So I, as I mentioned, have a lot of air. And that is why I love learning and talking to people and interviewing people on this podcast. I'm so curious. I could sit down with someone and ask them 500 million questions. That's why I got into coaching years ago because I love listening to people and understanding what makes them tick and asking them questions and making them feel like I'm really seeing them. I'm really hearing them because I am. So that is air. So that is the high road, really uh, using words to speak truth and to share love, even writing love letters to people. So a little bit of homework if you yourself are low on air. The first is to go out and socialize. So literally make plans with people and talk to them, (laughs) socialize with people, but you can also strike up conversations with a stranger. And if when I said that you cringed, then that's what I want you to do. I want you to strike up a conversation with a stranger. Recently, Cal and I actually were hosting two of our great friends. Um, It was one of Cal's best friends from college and his lovely wife. And they came to stay with us from Ohio for the weekend. So they were in California with us and they are so freaking cute. I don't want to get too much into their elemental breakdown right now, but I will tell you something that happened that clued me into the fact that they were both probably low on air which is that we were hopping in and out of boutiques one day and Cal and I started up a conversation with one of the store employees, which Cal and I do all the freaking time. And this adorable couple, these friends that were visiting us, were kind of staying quietly in the corner and then they just whispered to us like, oh, we'll be waiting outside. And we were like, oh, yes, of course. And um, then, you know, we came out and later that day I, I gave them the survey and I was correct. So you can see how that air can play out. Um, Another thing is valuing the words that you say. Be really intentional with the words that you speak and understand that it can heal or hurt. It can spread love or fear. So be careful with your words and really understand the weight of them. Also value your friendships, value connections and the people that you really can communicate your heart to. So that is the water coming into the air. So for that air homework, really finding ways to converse more, to write a love letter, to send a text to someone and say, I'm thinking of you, to record a little voice message for a friend that you haven't spoken to in a while. So really finding ways to speak and learn and read and write everything to do with words and the intellect. Moving on to earth. Earth people are so grounded and practical. They're pragmatic. They love to serve. They love to contribute to the world. They love to provide. They love to protect. So it's very much about um, doing the laundry and cleaning the dishes and cooking food and making sure your taxes are filed on time and making sure that your bank account is looking good and uh, paying your bills on time, making sure your credit score looks good. So all of those very practical things that for someone that doesn't have a lot of earth feels like chores, myself included, that is really where the earth element shines. So earth people, people with a lot of earth really are here to work and to contribute. And I know that can sound really heavy or not fun, but it's an important element. All four are important and we can't have one without the other. But of course, as we're going through, we can have too much of one or not enough. So earth, you can also think of as a tree or a mountain where they are really grounded and they are slow to change. They don't like change. They like their routine. They like it the way it's always been. I've been cutting my hair this way for 
25 years and I don't want to change it. I've been eating this way for the last 25 years and I don't want to change it. That's very earth. So stuck in their ways like a tree or a mountain. But also like a tree or a mountain, they're stable. They're dependable. They're reliable. If they say they're going to do something, they're going to do it and they're going to do it well. Earth people tend to be a little perfectionistic. They really like the details such as taxes and finances and cleaning the kitchen and organizing the cabinets. All of that relies on that strength of organization and detail orientation. So the low road of earth is getting caught in that perfectionism where they constantly feel inadequate. Like I'm not doing enough. I'm not serving enough. I'm not providing enough. I'm not accomplishing enough. They very much see their sense of worth through their accomplishments and nothing else. But they also can be critical and judgmental of others if they believe that others aren't doing it up to their standards or others aren't doing enough, aren't doing as much as they are. So there's kind of this comparison about how much everyone is accomplishing and doing and making money and providing and serving and contributing. So that is the low road, kind of that perfectionism and that critical judgmental nature. But the high road is that they are the reliable worker. Like you definitely want an earth person on your team if you are a manager or a boss. They will do what they promise to do. They will get it in on time. They will probably get it in early and it will be darn perfect. So those earth people are really here. Like work is their dharma. Dharma meaning almost like purpose. They came here to contribute to the world, to have something physical to show for their legacy when they're gone. So that is the high road. And they also in the high road can be very generous with money. The low road is that they tend to be a little bit stingy. They're very money focused because they're so practical. They want to make sure that if I'm going to do this work, that I'm paid the right amount, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting my bills in on time, my taxes. So they are very, very focused on kind of the material and the financial, which is not always a bad thing. I'll note. But At that high road, they are very generous and they let that money flow. And then at the low road, they tend to be a little bit stingy with it. So with earth, if you are low in earth, myself included, I will give you some homework. So a few things that are very earthy are just those small practical things we have to do around the house. I invite you to make your bed I invite you to clean the dishes. I invite you to cook. I invite you to reorganize. I invite you to also serve your loved ones. So if your partner is usually the one that cooks and cleans for you, I want you to surprise them and maybe cook for them. And again, if you're looking at me right now or you're listening to this and you're cringing, maybe that's the one. (laughs) That was part of the homework that I was given by my mentor because my amazing husband Cal has a lot of the earth element and I am relatively lower (laughs) in earth Um, and so he does a lot of the organization and the taxes and the bills and cooking and cleaning and part of it is he genuinely loves that he loves to serve and I contribute to the relationship in many of my own ways. So please don't think that I'm just like sitting here absorbing and receiving and that's it. I'm definitely contributing, but in my way. But my homework was to surprise him by cooking or cleaning the kitchen table or reorganizing something. And it's funny when I tried the other day, he was almost uncomfortable with it, like but this is my realm. Like, this is my thing. (laughs) So I was like, I mean, if you feel that way, then that's okay with me. So really listen to the homework that I'm giving you that that makes you cringe a little and then challenge yourself to do it. But if some of those don't resonate at all, my mentor, thank goodness, gave me some spiritual earth exercises because she knew that the really practical ones just made me like eek not my thing so for some spiritual earth practices you can go meditate amongst the trees 
if you can find a little area, maybe a forest near your house, even just a tree or two, I want you to sit by the tree or hug the tree, really feel that grounding energy of being in nature. And then she said, when you're out in nature, find a rock or a crystal that really speaks to you, some sort of stone, and carry it in your pocket at all times. And anytime throughout the day you remember that you have the rock, crystal, or stone in your pocket, take a moment to really fumble with it, feel it, and also kind of energetically ground again. You know, honor the earth element for keeping you stable, keeping your feet on the earth. So that is some uh, spiritual earth homework along with the classic grounding practice of walking barefoot on the grass. That's always helpful. But let's move on to the final element, which is fire. So fire is the other element that I have a lot of. So mine are fire and air. And then below that was water. Water was pretty balanced for me, but it wasn't my highest. And then earth was decently low. So fire, I am also deeply connected to. Fire people are loud, they're enthusiastic, they're passionate, they are what you see is what you get, they are bold, they are not afraid to stand up in front of the crowd and say, this is me, here I am, I'm here and I'm ready to share my voice, I'm ready to share my gifts. That's fire. It's the courage and the desire to stand out from the rest. It's the initiator, it's the inspirer, it's the one that says, I have this idea and I'm going for it. And they say it with so much charisma and confidence that everyone else is like, oh, I'm following that. I'm going to do what they're going to do. So that is fire. Fire is also very optimistic. They tend to be very playful. Actually, play, laughter, and fun is a fire element thing. So finding humor in life, laughing at yourself, finding the levity even in the dark moments, that is fire. So before I started this podcast, I mean literally recording today, I danced around my apartment to some Michael Jackson songs that made me laugh and I couldn't stop smiling and I feel so alive and so me when I do that because I'm fire (laughs) and because I'm air, that's why I have this podcast and the combination of the two is me saying I am okay being seen for who I am, for my beliefs, for my ideas. And I want to talk in the process. I want to communicate my ideas. I want to teach. I want to share. I want to ask people questions. I want to be curious. So that's exactly how we can look at the elements and find our own path. You know, combining the elements that you are and asking yourself, how do those alchemize together to create something really beautiful? So for me, fire and air, I have a lot of that inspiring, initiatory energy. It's the maintenance part that is really hard for me. That earth of now I have to sustain it. Now I must do the mundane every single day. I am someone, if I could start 500 careers in my life, but not necessarily continue any of them for that long that would make me a very very happy fire air person (laughs) but an earth person is the person that could have the same career for 45 years so that's for sure earth okay I digress (laughs) let's go back to fire for a second so for the low road of fire they have no off button they are extremists so they tend to go into binge eating they can be a little indulgent a little promiscuous they drink too much they talk too loudly they sometimes just don't have discipline they are just extreme with whatever they do and I will say I am from a fire predominant family and there is a lot of extremism in my family a lot of um maybe starting an exercise routine, going full force, and then injuring oneself and stopping completely. So that's very fire. It's an all or nothing. As my teacher likes to say, fire is never lukewarm. It's either hot or it's hot. So that is the low road of fire going into those extremes. 
the high road, as I mentioned earlier, is the inspirer, the enthusiastic leader. No one has passion or optimism or belief and confidence like a fire person. And they're not afraid to boo, be who they are and wear the bright, bold colors and speak their truth. So that's fire. So if you were low in fire or even through my talking, you have felt like, wow, that does not sound like me at all. Here is some homework for you. A couple things. I invite you to, as I just said, wear something really bold. Wear something that will attract others' eyes to you. And if you usually shrink from that, I want you to stand strong in that. I want you to be confident and courageous by wearing that bold and weird or bright outfit. Let people see you for who you are. Another thing you can do is play. When I say play, I mean dance around your house. I mean sing, like belt out your heart to your favorite music. That's very fire. Just letting that that fire, that energy, that life force come out. Laugh. Say some jokes. Laugh at your own jokes. Watch comedy. Go to a comedy show. Another thing is just putting yourself out there. So if you have wanted to start something for a long time, but you're afraid it'll fail or that people won't like it or that people will judge you or you're afraid to be seen, I want you to amp up your fire, maybe even go work out, go to a Zumba class, get that fire, that blood pumping, and then I want you to start the thing. Again, that initiatory energy, that's fire. It's the spark of life. It gets things started with great confidence and gusto. (laughs) So that's fire. You can even hear it in my voice. I'm getting extra sweaty and fired up right now as I speak. (laughs) But I want you to practice putting yourself out there. My amazing, amazing mother-in-law is constantly talking about my fire in a in a positive way um talking about that i am not afraid to wear outfits that draw eyes whereas she always says that her favorite kind of colors and outfits are these are her words subdued very mellow muted colors whereas for me it's like i don't do subdued i don't do muted if it's not loud and bold and bright i'm not wearing it Which is funny, I say that because I'm currently purposefully wearing an earth outfit to help me pull out more of my earth element. So I am wearing a brown shirt that I got for the holidays this year and my trusty old butterfly earrings. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see. Another great bit of homework for being low on fire is exercise. Exercising Getting the blood pumping, getting heat in your veins is literally what re-sparks that fire, what reignites that life force. Even in my class, there is actually a woman that has a lot of fire in her chart, but she said that she's really low on fire. Actually, fire is her lowest missing element right now. And as my mentor was kind of coaching her through it, she realized that she has for so many decades, suppressed her fire to keep the earth going. She was a single mom of four children. I think one of the children died. There was just a lot of hardship in her life. And so she held on to the stability, the practicality of earth. And she gave up. She surrendered that fire. And so she struggles to laugh, to have fun, to play. She doesn't exercise. And she has found herself to be quite lethargic and depressed recently. And my mentor said, that's because you put out your own fire. You need to re re spark that fire, get back that life force. So a great way to do that is through exercise. So I myself exercise every single day, at least once. My favorite is exercising in the morning because I feel like it gives me my life energy for the day. But even when I exercise in the morning, which is every single day of the week, I also tend to go on at least like two to three walks throughout the day because when I sit for too long, I get really, really lethargic. I lose my inspiration. I lose my 
passion, my optimism. And so even for me to relax, I'm that person that would first want to go on a really hard hike to the point of exhaustion and then I can relax. Like I get my energy by expending energy and fire, the fire element is the only one that has that. So I had actually heard on a podcast a few years ago something that made me feel so seen and heard. It was this woman explaining that her and her husband had had an astrology chart reading together and that she learned that her husband, who is really, really into exercise, he does Ironmans all the time, like he's constantly in triathlons, biking, running, swimming, and she'd always be like, dude, can you just like chill? And she found out that he has so much fire in his chart that he needs it. He thrives off of it. So anyway, that's my little aspect or my little talk on exercise. But even for those of you that don't have a lot of fire naturally in your chart or in your personality, bringing that fire element in, learning to dance, run, exercise, weightlift, row, swim, skip, hop, jump, that will help to bring that fire life force into your life as well. So that leads me into the last bit, which is now that you know about the elements, the ways that they can embody themselves into our lives, into our personalities, our day-to-day experiences, I want you to have fun with it. From my fire heart to your ears, I want you to have fun with it. To have fun with it, here are a few ideas. You can go on an element walk. So let's say you go on a an earth walk where you're kind of looking down at the ground, you're admiring the, the leaves, maybe you notice some slugs on flowers, maybe you hug a tree. That would be very earth. Maybe you're walking a little bit more slow, letting yourself be heavy and grounded. And then maybe you go for an air walk. So you bring someone with you and you're talking, 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 and you're like barely even noticing the world around you because you're in this mental socializing energy. Or maybe you're not even with someone, but you are uh, listening to really fast music or you're just looking around and getting distracted by everything around you. That would be very air. So find ways to go on elemental walks. You can also cook different meals for the elements. So maybe you have a really grounding like root vegetable soup that's kind of water and earth or you need something a little spicy or bright or bold, unique. That would be very fire. You can also listen to elemental music. So going back to this adorable earthy couple that visited us from Ohio We played this game in the car right before I gave everyone the survey. I said, okay, I want us to pass around the phone that's connected to the speakers. And I want us each to put three songs into the Spotify queue that we were playing. And I want the songs to really embody who you are, your personality, your energy. So I went first and my songs were such happy songs like the songs that they come on you can't help but smile suddenly it's as if the sun is shining you want to get on your feet you want to dance around you want to like tell everyone to have a good time so that was very very fire a little air too just very like active and then this couple went and theirs was very earthy much more like very slow and calming and grounding so even talking slow is very earth whereas you can see I talk really fast and that's my air coming out and then Cal went and his was uh kind of airy it's like it was kind of funky and weird and um yeah, a little a little airy, a little Aquarius-esque. <laughs> so it's fun to play different music. And even as you listen to music today or tomorrow or this weekend, I want you to ask yourself, oh, what element does this embody? And then the last couple of tips is uh, wear different elemental outfits. Like I said that I'm wearing an earth tone today to honor the earth. And these friends that were visiting, the wife, Megan, who's adorable, when I was giving them the survey, she said at the end, wow, 
I only wear earth tones and my lowest element by a long shot is fire, I think I'm actually going to purchase something bright to wear this spring. And I said, yeah, that's it. (laughs) My fire came out. I was so excited for her. So you can wear different elements as your outfits. You can have fun with it. And then the last tip is challenge yourself. So have fun with it, but challenge yourself. If, as I was explaining one element, you're like, oh God, that's so not me. I never want to put myself out there or I'm really not the social type. I don't want to be talking and and speaking a lot or wow, I'm really not the crying type. I don't want to be emotional. I'm not going to turn on a sad movie. I'm not going to imagine my dog's dying. Or maybe you're the one that is like, I really don't want to make my bed or clean the dishes or reorganize the cabinets. Whatever it is, we all have that area that is much less comfortable I want you to go for that one. (laughs) I want you to challenge yourself. And then when you're sick of that, go to the elements that feel safe and secure and comfortable and revel in them. So that is the end of my elemental talk. Again, this survey and some of these concepts come from Deborah Silverman, who is my astrology teacher. She's amazing. You can find her all over the internet. She even has a book called The Missing Element that I highly recommend. I haven't gotten my hands on it yet, but I have to read a lot of the excerpts from my class. So from what I have read, it's fantastic. And if you enjoyed this, please let me know because as I mentioned at the beginning, I am studying astrology. I cannot wait to metaphorically open up my doors for astrology readings and courses and all of the things in the future. I have no doubt that more astrology content is coming, but let me know what you thought of this. Let me know what elements you have in highest proportions and lowest proportions. You can message me on Instagram. I'm there at It's All Magic Podcast or Devin underscore Rochelle underscore. You can also find me on YouTube so that you can watch this and follow along as I start to produce more astrology content, breathwork videos, all the good stuff. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing element filled day and week. I hope that you challenge yourself, but more importantly, From my fire heart to your ears, I hope you have fun with it. (laughs) If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a family member or friend to just keep the good vibes coming and to ensure that everyone in the world can allow astrology to help them grow and also just love themselves unconditionally because we are all made so divinely, so perfectly, and it's a fun world to live in that we're all so different. That's my personal take. Okay, my friends, I will see you next week. I already cannot wait. My fire and air can't wait to come back and say hi again. (laughs) Okay, my friends, bye for now. Bye.